Ever been to Zoo 53? Once. It's a real hole. I take offense at that, you aliens. I've enjoyed Captain Marvel the movie. It's probably one of my favorite MCU movies, and Carol Danvers is pretty much one of my new mains. Uh, that's all I can say. The only thing new is that Cinema Sins is going to send this movie. Dang it. Never much like the Stan Lee cameos and definitely don't like logos, but man, this is touching. Four sins removed. <sighs> Never liked the Stan Lee cameos and definitely don't like the logos. Okay, definitely don't like the logos, that's them. But never liked the Stan Lee cameos? Gosh darn it. Can you explain that? But uh, this being touching and four cents removed, uh, yeah, that's pretty much well deserved. <sighs> you will be missed. But while we're on the subject of opening logos for movies, let's frame it this way. Imagine buying the new Taylor Swift album, but before you can hear me, ee -ee, you have to first listen to 20 seconds of a Universal Music Group audio jingle. It would probably be rocking and full of tight harmonies, but it would still forever be 20 seconds of noise standing between you and your music. That's what opening studio logos do for movies. Why is my hand so angry? I like how they give us the name of the city, the description of that city's importance, and then a third line with an utterly incomprehensible series of letter and number characters. You know what time it is. Jesus, Marvel movies. Young Dumbledore, Young Pope, Sherlock Holmes, is there any beloved institution that Jude Law hasn't infiltrated? Anything new? No. Funny, I was thinking the same thing about this chatty, friendly fight scene, which happens in every f***ing movie. There's nothing more dangerous to a warrior than emotion. Not even a nuclear weapon? A landmine? A sharp sword? A sniper's bullet? Jagged rocks? Meat from a plant that once had an E. coli outbreak? Control your impulses. Stop using this. Start using this. There's so much goddamn pedantic mansplaining in the beginning of this movie that I fast-forwarded to the end, where Carol blasts the out of Yon Rog and watched it three times in a row. Future VR requires artificial tendrils that get to know you better than your spouse. Just because it looks kind of cool doesn't make it practical. So the Burrito Supreme searches your thoughts and becomes the person that you're closest to before communicating? I mean, Contact got murdered for doing that at the end of the movie. Solar. The Skrulls have invaded yet another border planet. This time, Torfa. Already lost me, dude. If you think for one minute I'm getting all this down, plus the three or four other names, organizations, planets he mentions in this briefing, you sadly overestimate my ability to give a Aqua Marvel. Do you read me? Does anybody copy? As technologically advanced as they are, the Cree are apparently still relying on 1990s cell phone reception. This is some dusty f -kery. Dust things. Suspense? <laughs> I'm no expert, but maybe if you spent less time screaming, you'd be able to do more scrolling. No one will be seated during the bunch of bulls portion of the movie. Some stuff is happening. Just try and keep track of the purple and the green. They're on different sides, I think. The movie does a great job advertising the Air Force. You don't belong out here! I'm strong enough! Kill the movie does pile on a bit heavy with this stuff about her constantly being told she's not good enough. I get that people are told that, but in movie form, maybe we don't need to see it a dozen times to get the point. Okay, fine. We need some backstory on why Carol's so driven to be the best. But this exposition brain probe really feels more like a Nike commercial than an MCU film. Look down. Focus. Wait, can you change the way the camera of your memory tilts so that you can pick up fine details? This is like the zoom and enhance cliche, but for your brain. Dr. Wendy Lawson, that's her. Do you hear that too? So, Carol can hear the scrolls that are digging around in her memories? And she, in memory, reacts to it? You can't change an event by remembering it, right? Right? She got knocked out cold and captured on that planet with a single blast of one of these space tasers. Now she's impervious to them. <laughs> it's not exactly uh. full size, so I guess we can call this a little helm scream. In case you thought this movie's 90s references were gonna be subtle, she crash lands into a f***ing blockbuster. <laughs> huh? Movie's playing this as a visual gag, but was Carol seriously gonna immediately shoot any non-threatening presence in this environment? What if this were the janitor doing the late night cleaning? This top shelf here goes Hudsucker Proxy, Hook, something else that I'm pretty sure is Hamburger Hill, then First Night, then Jumpin' Jack Flash, Junior, and f***ing Just Cause? I worked at three different blockbusters in my lifetime, and you get fired for this 
You have one job. And I think half these movies on the shelf star Sean Connery and Arnold Schwarzenegger. How likely in 1995 is it that a blockbuster would be advertising Babe with a giant poster and standee when that was only released in August of that year? It sure as f wasn't coming out on video at this point. Honestly, We Take Care of Those Dirty Looks is quite simply the worst dry cleaning advertising slogan I could even fathom. Why does a dry cleaning service even need a slogan? Wouldn't you be better off just writing your hours of operation? Talk about some nuclear yada yada. How the hell does outdated 90s tech and a payphone turn into a communicator? With the ability to send signals to her people millions of miles away in space. Hold a bit before... Sure, she could make a space phone out of that, but she couldn't bypass Ma Bell and the ill communication. Ever been to Z-53? Once. It's a real oh. Aliens find the Earth to be way less than acceptable cliche. Okay, if... I take offense at that, you aliens. Thinking Earth is a shadow. What would you done better? Wait. Don't answer that, I prefer uh, just the way it is. This call is urgent enough to use the sirens? Why not take the cops and S.H.I.E.L.D. until after daybreak to respond? And why was S.H.I.E.L.D. alerted at all? It's a broken window at a f***ing blockbuster. Okay, this de-aging technology has officially gotten creepy as hell. I'll be honest, uh. terrified Sam Jackson looks pretty awesome here. And I am terrified of how that technology will definitely be used in the future. This is the most convenient road near a train situation any city planner ever cooked up. Suspect on northbound train in pursuit. And she should be easy to track, considering she'll be the only person in Los Angeles to take the train. Sure, Stan Lee could have been reading Kevin Smith's Small Red script in 1995. The movie came out October 20th, 1995. So this could be early in the year when it was about to get shot or something. The problem is the record story just left. Smashing Pumpkins, Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness, being advertised here as coming soon or already out, came out October 23rd, 1995. And while it's insane that those two things were only three days apart, Stan Lee would not have been reading the script in October unless he was just getting nostalgic about his cameo. <laughs> for the residents of LA to jump to an old lady's needs and all, but how is this even possible? You're telling me that after all the sh kicking Carol's done, three regular ass commuters could temporarily restrain her? Fight chase on top of a moving train? I feel like I've never seen that before, except always. Train's heading for a tunnel up ahead. Of course it is. Tunnels, the only logical choice once you've opted for fight on top of a train. <laughs> What? I'm still here at the Blockbuster. Colson saw Fury take off forever ago. So why is he just calling it? Also, oh, look, I, never I think the that. youngening effect they're using on Sam Jackson is amazing. But they must have used all the resources on that because Clark Gregg's face makes Jeff Bridges and Tron Legacy look like fine art. <laughs> look, movie, no one in a major city subway terminal would look this hard and long at a girl in a weird costume. Subway terminals are f***ing beacons for folks in weird costumes. I rode a train once with Spider-Man and Marilyn Monroe and a guy that looked exactly like Richard Grieco. Only I don't think that was a costume. I think that was just Richard Grieco. <laughs> there you go. Now that no one can tell that's an alien, no one will ask questions about the body with a jacket thrown over its face inside the wrecked car. Ah, cool. The doohickey that the scroll dropped on the train gets inserted into the whatchamacallit and immediately displays plot convenient footage, perfectly edited for maximum exposition. <laughs> <laughs> Alta Vista, internet cafes, modems, big computer monitors. Wasn't 1995 hilarious? But seriously, how would Carol have the first to work this? Theft. And sure, the motorcycle guy was an asshole and probably deserved it. But what did this vintage boutique ever do to anyone? Hey, how's her eye? I'd say fine. Phew, why are they not gonna ham-handedly try and shoehorn a reason for Fury's eye patch into this movie? I got word on a motorcycle thief that fits her description. But instead of immediately following up on that lead, I'm gonna waste valuable time at S.H.I.E.L.D. espousing this clunky dialogue. Might even drink a cheer wine and stop by Sam Goody's to pick up a jagged little pill CD before I act on any of this information. <laughs> Coggling. Scrolls can only sim recent memories of their host bodies. That is literally the definition of a stupid restriction to put on an ability just for plot or hero reasons. Why should they even be able to access any memories if all they're doing is Copycatting. Where were you born? Huntsville, Alabama. What good does this do, Carol? Except to provide a little more backstory for Fury. Is she able to verify this bullshit in any way? Prove you're not a scroll. <laughs> Carol is a dick to what, if this is a jukebox from the 90s, has to be 30% ACDC CDs, 40% Tom Petty CDs, 29% Journey CDs, and 1% Van Morrison CD. Is that a communicator? Yeah. State-of-the-art two-way pager. Which would in no way work in a bunker like this, but I'm gonna keep making these nostalgic references as long as Marvel pays me to do so. Oh my, how how did this cat get into this official government covert facility? And did they know he was a flurkin? If so, why is he out roaming the f***ing halls? Hey, that's exactly how Eminem writes his lyrics. I'll assume Lawson was writing the follow-up to Stan. I want to question her alone. That sounds, well, evil and or dirty. All I know is we take him into dead or alive. Dead or alive? Yeah, agreed. That's excessive. It makes no sense. Unless your boss's boss is a scroll. <laughs> 
Holy f**k, these are the loudest lights I've ever heard. Can you imagine the constant jump scares you'd have to endure if you were collating these records?